Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, my name is Caroline and I'm a third year law student at Harvard Law School. Um, so I make videos on my life sometimes. I do vlogs, weekly vlogs. Today's video is gonna be more of a QA. and a So I had some of you guys submit questions on Instagram and YouTube. Um, and so I'm gonna answer some of them. Um, this video will probably be a little bit rambly, but I hope it's interesting. I'll go over things like transferring, how that's been, my post-graduation plans, dating, and more. So follow along. Bring it straight into it. People are always asking me about dating at Harvard and like Harvard Law School specifically. It's like anywhere else. I don't know that it's like much different. Um, like it's not like there's a Harvard specific dating app. Actually, if I get people from Harvard Law School on my dating apps, I always swipe left. Just because it's like dating at work. It's like, if it doesn't work out, you have to see these people in the hallways, like your friends or their friends, or like you always know someone that knows them. It's very much like high school and law school. I mean, there are tons of success stories. I know lots of people who met in law school and Harvard and are dating and are going really strong now. I mean, one of my closest friends met her boyfriend like at the beginning of last year and now they're really, really strong. They're super cute. It has not worked out for me. But I think that's more of a me thing and that I don't have great judgment than a Harvard thing. But you just have to be like aware of the fact that you are probably gonna run into these people if you do anything. For the record, I have done the dating thing in law school. It just gets really messy. Before we keep going though, I did wanna share that this video is sponsored by Ana Luisa, a jewelry company based in New York. Uh, how cute are these little pearl safety pin earrings? I feel like safety pin earrings have been in for a while now and I finally bit the bullet and got some. These are called the Sia earrings. Oh, so cute. Just a nice staple. I also got uh, these, which are Donna. I feel like, they're, like they're a little dressy, but still classic. I have a bracelet on that I don't think you can see, but this is also Ana Luisa. With the holidays coming up, Ana Luisa is, makes a great gift. It's, they have affordable pieces, some are high-end pieces. I do also have a discount code that I'll put up here and in the description box for 20% off. They're carbon and water neutral, which we love in this day and age. Um, they're affordable, they're really good quality. I've been wearing my Ana Luisa pieces for honestly months now, have not tarnished. Um, they hold up strong and there's just always a classic. Everything will be linked in the description. They offer really fast shipping all over the world. Perfect since we're getting into the Christmas holiday season. Oh, here, let me show what these look like on. These are the Donna on, which I feel like is cute for like, just making your outfit a little bit dressier, you know, nothing over the top. All right, back to answering some questions. One of the most common questions I get is whether I regret transferring, whether I like Harvard, whether like how it's been kind of fitting into Harvard, um, and just kind of how law school's going since I've transferred. So for those of you who don't know, I did transfer to Harvard Law School. I spent my first year at Michigan. Um, I have a video about transferring up I'll link it somewhere here. The short answer is I do not regret transferring at all. I was honestly incredibly nervous to transfer. I think that the kind of opportunities that Harvard provides is truly kind of unparalleled. Not that Michigan wasn't a great school. I really enjoyed my time in Michigan. At Harvard, just some of the opportunities, for example, there are way more clinical opportunities. So there are way more opportunities to get kind of hands-on legal experience while at law school, which I think is really important. Um, and I get to do it in an area of law that I'm really interested in. So I thought I'm part of the International Human Rights Clinic this semester. I've always wanted to do human rights work and there isn't a similar opportunity at Michigan to do this. So that's one big thing that has made transferring completely worth it. Through this clinic, I've been able to do very meaningful human rights work. I've been able to secure a J-term placement in January to keep doing human rights work in France. Um, and it's just helped me make a ton of connections in the human rights field in case I ever want to pivot back to that in the future. Another big difference at Harvard is just the kind of lunch talks, the kind of people who come in on a daily basis to come talk to us. I get to see Justice Breyer. I get to see people like David Singer from the New York Times. I get to see various in-house counsel from LMLB to Uber to Sweetgreen, just 
um, different kinds of professors from all over. The kind of lunch talks I've had at Harvard are just so amazing. Like the kind of people I can just sh go into a random classroom and listen talk. So my professors at Harvard are also completely different. I'm taking a class this semester with a former Canadian Supreme Court Justice, Justice Abella. She would not have gone to teach at you know very many other law schools. And as a Canadian and as someone who really looked admires the kind of work she's done on the Supreme Court and also in the Supreme Court. I've been really excited about this class this entire semester, and this is not an opportunity I would have had elsewhere. Um, the fact that Justice Breyer is teaching at Harvard, you can't get that, you know, at a ton of other schools of, as a former Supreme Court Justice, a former US Supreme Court Justice teaching at your school. And um, I took a course last year with uh, various chiefs and former chiefs uh, from the DOJ, from like the fraud and FCPA section. And that those are connections that I have for life now, you know, like the just the caliber of people who, who come and teach here and who I can connect with is just on a different level at Harvard. And that, and that is fundamentally why I transferred is for the education opportunities, the learning opportunities and like the experiential opportunities. Um, another big thing that has made it really worth it is um, I did the Viz Moot in my first year and I'm doing it again this year. It's International Arbitration Moot and the Arbitration Moot is just much better funded at Harvard. So I feel like it's much more of a learning experience for me. I feel like I can get a lot more out of it. Um, obviously, I really enjoy doing the Viz Moot in my first year at Michigan. So it's not to say that like money like makes everything better. I mean, I clearly enjoyed it enough to come back and want to do it this year and captain the team this year. And like, that's what made me interested in international arbitration, but it just makes my life a whole lot easier when um, it's not just students figuring things out and you have like institutional support behind you to help you do extracurriculars or whatever interests you. Um, another thing that made me, that made transferring worth it is the grade system at Harvard. Harvard does pass fail honors. There are no letter grades. There's no like A plus A, A minus B plus, none of that. And that makes school a lot less stressful when you either get like a pass, which is 70% of class or an honors. And it also feels like there's less competition amongst my peers. Um, and, if, and Harvard's class size is also much larger. So I feel like I've gotten to, to meet a variety of people. Um, I feel like I'm a, lot, a little bit more anonymous, which I kind of like. Someone has asked me how it was kind of fitting in as a transfer. I think I had it really easy because the first year, the 1Ls here had a remote. So when I joined as a 2L, the majority of them had not been on campus. So they were all kind of meeting each other for the first time, which made it super easy to blend in um, or to like fit in, I guess. The transfer class is always super close. So a lot of my closest friends were from the transfer class, super amazing people. Um, there's no difference with how you interact with professors um, as a transfer. Like unless you bring it up, they wouldn't know. And most of these professors that you're having ha don't teach 1L classes. So they wouldn't have met any of the 1Ls to begin with. Honestly, like I've really enjoyed my experience at Harvard. 3L has been going super well. I took a super chill course load this semester to focus on my interests. So I'm doing a lot of human rights work. I'm doing the class with Justice Abella. I'm doing the human rights clinic. Um, I'm spending a lot of time on the Viz Moot, which is like a big passion project for me this this year. Um, it's back in person in Vienna, so I'm super excited to go and compete and get the get it back running again at Harvard. We didn't compete last year, but yeah, 3L is honestly going super well. Um, I'm still very busy, but that's my fault. I could have definitely taken it more chill by not doing so many extracurriculars, um, but it's what I enjoy. I that's the personality that I can't really turn off. Um, the next set of questions. I've, I'm going to categorize as like, what is in my future? I'm gonna ask you what I'm doing kind of five years in the future, 10 years in the future, 15 years in the future. So my current plan after graduation is I'm going to a law firm, a big law firm in New York. Um, I'm gonna be doing the law firm associate lifestyle for a couple years. I'm going to be doing trial work, hopefully some international arbitration work, litigation, kind of commercial disputes, things like that. Now, a lot of students who are going to big law, especially in the corporate world, have plans on leaving to go in-house within three to five years or to go to the government. I don't have such explicit plans. I'm not opposed to going in-house, but I am also not opposed to just staying at the law firm, especially if I like it and the kind of work. There's such different kinds of work between being in-house and only working for one client and like less, probably less on like a variety of litigation issues versus at a law firm where you get to work on a variety of different issues for different clients. I will also fully depend on how the hours work out. Um, law firm associate hours are especially notorious for being very kind of overworked or having very long hours. And so if that's something that I just decide is not for me, I would totally be happy to just switch paths and go in-house. But as it stands, I 
am like I'm just gonna explore kind of law firm life and see how that feels for me for the next three or four years and then decide afterwards. If I were to leave a law firm, I have two kind of big interests. So I would really like to get back into human rights work someday whether that's within three years or that's within five years, I would like to pivot back into international law work, human rights work. Um, I figured out at this semester that I much prefer to do like fact finding, investigational type work, um, whether I do that as an NGO or um, for the UN or something like that, like kind of mission type work, fact finding. And then I, would, I think human rights litigation is really important. And I feel like that would be an area I definitely want to explore a little bit. But I would definitely love to switch back into human rights litigation, human rights fact finding and research uh, at some point. It is a little bit harder to do human rights work at a law firm. You're definitely doing it more from the business corporate perspective, but with the development of corporate and business human rights and that practice, who knows, maybe I will be able to do human rights at a law firm. But I think that there is a 65 to 70% chance that I switch into human rights work within the next 10 years after graduation. Or alternatively, if I just feel like tired and burned out after three or four years in big law, I might just go in house. I would want to go in-house in a startup type company. I wouldn't want to go in-house like a big bank or a company like Facebook or Amazon or anything. Just because I feel like that's just more of the same. Like you're just a small cloud part of a larger system. I really want to go in-house into like a startup or something that's more close knit. So it feels like I have more of an impact on the company and the culture and the decisions. A startup in California sounds really good. I'm probably not like a STEM startup. So my options are limited. But I think it would be really cool to kind of fit the content create, creation interest of me um, with law. So if I can do like a startup that does like the esports content creators type stuff, it really depends on how I feel after three years in big law. I could really love it or I could burn out. But yeah, no set life plans. All the lawyers I've spoken to, whether they're human rights lawyers or in-house lawyers or just kind of any lawyer that you interact with at law school, they always say things about how they get to the position based on a little bit of luck and based on just random opportunities that pop up. So I think it's really important to just keep my options open and be open to what comes along my way. Someone also did ask whether I would keep do, doing my YouTube channel after law school. I'm leaning towards yes if there is interest um i think that it was a little bit hard to vlog this summer at a law firm because there's a lot of restrictions with how much i could film in office i think one i can probably get away with a little bit more as an associate because i'm not worried about not getting a return offer and number two i'll have a proper like ad work from home setup um while working full-time in the future so i can definitely film like a day in my life working from home as a big law associate which would give a much more in-depth look of what what like being in big law looks like and then i'll sneak in some like clips from the office but it really just depends on how open my firm is to it but i definitely will want to make vlogs if that's something you guys are interested in so let me know i feel like the new york vlog market is, is so oversaturated so it'll probably be mostly like life as a big law associate my my like lifestyle fashion content never seems to do well so i feel like that's a dream i give up on a few people have asked me how being an international student is I haven't noticed a ton of a difference. It does limit some of my like opportunities during school. For example, I can't do like external clinics where I work for like a judge or I can't do external clinics, um, external clinical placements with like companies in the US. Mine have to be either like an official school clinic or it has to be international. Um, so that limits a few things, but I like there are so many opportunities, so it doesn't bother me too much. Um, as someone who's going to big law after graduation, being an international student doesn't impact too much. The career office keeps a list of firms that will sponsor visas. And so as long as I just stay away from firms that don't sponsor visas, it hasn't been an issue. Firms hire a lot of non-Americans. I mean, a lot of, they hire a lot of LLMs. Firms hire from Canadian law schools, like New York firms hire from Canadian law schools. So they know what they're doing. Like they have people to take care of it. So it hasn't, it hasn't impacted the process too much. They like are just used to hire international students. I think it may be a little bit harder to be an international student if you're going for public interest work, just because there's a little bit less security there and a little bit less uh, familiarity with, with kind of sponsoring visas and that whole process depending on where you go. But being an international student honestly hasn't impacted very much. And I would say that it like has been a nice talking point. So especially given recent domestic affairs in the US and the trend there, I've been dropping the whole, oh, actually I'm Canadian thing very often. 
um, and it's always just like a fun anecdote. So, oh, one thing is that I cannot clerk federally. I have no interest in clerking anyway, so that's not too much of an issue, but you can't hold like a position in the federal government as um, an international student. So I can't work for like the DOJ or a judge or anything like that. Not that I really want to. I think if I were to work for the government, I would want to go back to Canada anyways. Like I would work for the Canadian government in a heartbeat in like 20 years in like diplomacy or something, but no interest in working for the US government. So it doesn't really impact me to be an international student. And Harvard has a great international office. So they would just take care of like the visa and the farms and everything. They send me reminders about what I need to do. So. It's just been smooth sailing as an international student, honestly. Someone asked me what are some of the most interesting courses I've taken in law school. So in first year, I took a course on forensic science and the law, um, TLDR. A lot of forensic science is like junk, all the stuff about arson and bite marks and shaking baby syndrome, all made up. Um, and they've been using that science to put people away for years wrongfully. These are all wrongful convictions and there's no automatic process to go and review these convictions even though the science that put them put them away has been debunked. So that was a little bit disheartening to learn and that's why I worked at the Innocence Clinic my first summer but that that course made a huge impact on my um, like I guess law school tra trajectory. I took a course on corporate criminal investigations in the FCPA, which is really interesting. And that kind of is what fueled my whole interest in business and human rights, because you can have corporate like liability, like corporate criminal liability for fraud and like corruption. So why not have it for human rights and international law? There are due diligence laws that kind of like resemble the FCPA law but like in the EU and in places like France. And so it's certainly feasible to impose like human rights obligations on corporations that have um, like civil penalties. So when I say like what courses are super interesting to me, I think my definition of like an interesting course is whether it sticks with me after the course, whether it shapes the things I continue to do in law school and whether it shapes like my interests. So the, my corporate criminal investigations class and my forensic science class definitely did that. Um, my course this semester with Justice Sabella has been really great just in the sense that she brings in guest speakers. So we heard from Harold Cole, who was, uh, who was Dean of Yale Law School and he worked in like certain presidential administrations on international law, a big fit in international law. He um, was Ukraine's lawyer at the, IC, the ICJ, which is like so cool. Um, we heard from the Canadian ambassador to the UN. We heard from Margaret Atwood who came in just kind of crazy. Um, uh, I spent four years at U of T where she like lives and I never met Margaret Atwood so I had to come to the US to meet Margaret Atwood. Those are the three that come to mind but yeah those are some of the more interesting classes for me. This video is actually much longer than I anticipated and I actually have a lot more questions so I think I'm gonna do a part two. So I'm wrapping this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely leave any more comments or questions if you have them in the comments. Don't forget to check out on Louisa. Everything is in the description and like, comment, subscribe.